Hi, this is Nick from The Groundwire, and today I want to talk about a few tips uh, for setting up your 335 or Gibson style dual humbucker guitar to get as much uh, versatility uh, as you can. Okay, um, so the purpose of this video is to um, discuss ways to kind of set up, um, really I'm using a 335 because I think that the 335 is one of the most versatile uh, guitars, I mean really ever, um, it's my favorite Gibson uh, style guitar, but this would apply to any dual humbucker or really dual pickup, so P90 included. Uh, Gibson style guitar, so Les Pauls, SGs, anything like that, as long as it has uh, two volume and two tone controls, okay? Um, so if you're anything like me, and I think a lot of um, guitar players do this, for the first many, many years that I played Gibson style guitars, um, I was using either the bridge pickup or the neck pickup uh, and really to be honest <laughs> only the bridge pickup like 90% of the time um, and I kind of thought Gibson type guitars were sort of a one-trick pony for crunchy rock and roll type sounds um, and it wasn't until you know many years later figuring out that there's a whole other world of tones out there that that these guitars are capable of uh, and a lot of those sounds really live in the volume and tone controls. Um, you know, like many guitar players, I also bridge pickup, volume and tone at 10, uh, and that's kind of how I always played. Um, the majority of our, you know, guitar heroes from the 60s and 70s whose classic tones we're all chasing, well, those guys didn't have channel switching amps and, and they used the knobs on their guitars. Uh, and I think this is one of the biggest things that most of us miss when we're trying to go after that classic tone. Um, so a couple things about the setup before I start demoing some sounds. The first thing I would recommend if you're using a Gibson style guitar is I would highly recommend uh, setting that up for what's called 50s wiring. Uh, and I'm not an expert. I, I, it either means that the tone controls are in series with the volume pots or they're in parallel. I forget which is which. But you can look it up. Any tech that you are asking to do rewire will know what 50s wiring is. But what it means in for practical purposes is that the tone controls are much more uh, interactive with the volume controls and they don't just roll off high end. Uh, they kind of scoop out the mid range and clean up the sound. So let me try and demonstrate this a little bit here on just the neck pickup. Here's the sound of my 335. I'm playing through a 1965 Fender Deluxe Reverb. Now I'm gonna roll the tone control back and you'll hear that it's also taking out mid-range as well. So it does get darker, but the other thing that it does is that it cleans up and almost gets this slightly more acoustic-like sound. Here, I'll, I'll play it with a pick so you can hear the difference. And when I roll the tone back up, you'll hear it gets not just brighter, but a little bit louder, dirtier, and more mid-rangey. Okay, so the first thing, yeah, 50s wiring um, makes the tone controls a lot more usable as opposed to just not doing much and then shelving off high end, um, which the tone rolled all the way off sound, you know, the, the... That's a cool sound too, um, but the 50s wiring enables you to get a lot more 
out of your tone controls, in my opinion. Um, obviously, if you can, if you can um, use lower output pickups, I think that's really helpful um, in getting those classic sounds. Obviously, high output pickups, especially humbuckers, they have a place for certain sounds. Um, for the kind of tones that I'm talking about today, uh, a PAF, a vintage wind type thing is helpful. Okay, so what's the trick? Well, really, in essence, the trick is basically always using both pickups and blending using your volume and tone controls to, to get a variety of sounds. So uh, let's demonstrate that a little bit. So if I were to use just the neck pickup and switch to the bridge pickup, um, the sounds are cool, uh, but they're somewhat neither one are to me is at the beautiful airiness that you get out of both pickups on uh, you just get more dynamics um, here I'll show you so here's the neck pickup <laughs> between with both volumes all the way up it's a cool sound but this still isn't quite what I'm after yet that sound is cool but what happens is it'll start to kind of scoop out the mid-range from these two pickups canceling certain frequencies and so to me the real secret is you put both pickups on and you start to roll one volume back and all of a sudden, a little bit of the mid-range comes back and you get this beautiful, airy, glassy sound that's really usable for clean and overdrive. So let me show you what I mean. So I just rolled the neck pickup down from 10 to 8. Uh, and all of a sudden it cleans up and it gets that beautiful, glassy, uh, airy sound. The trick is basically what I do is I leave the neck pickup on like eight most of the time. And then to vary the sounds, I change the volume and the tone. You change the volume on my bridge pickup and the tone controls. So let me show you a little bit about what I'm talking about here. So with the, if I even the volumes, put them both at eight, again, you start to get some of that frequency cancellation from having both pickups on and you get sort of a chimey kind of sound. Now listen to what happens as I roll the volume up. And I can get all kinds of these awesome shades in between just messing with the volume control on the bridge pickup. So with the volume down like that around four on the bridge pickup, you get this almost acoustic like sound that's awesome for strumming. And if I just roll the volume up on the bridge pickup, I get a great sound for some clean single note type lead stuff. And there's so many different sounds everywhere in between that you can that you can get. further you start to roll back the tone control on the bridge and that will again kind of clean up the sound without making it too much darker so you can get this great almost jazzy kind of sound and 
I can't play jazz guitar at all. But you get sort of a cool... So, the, so the, all the sounds are available by just leaving both pickups on, always keeping this pickup selector in the middle, and just changing the relationship between the balance of the pickups. Same thing works awesome for, um, for using with overdrive. So I got, uh, this is a, the Fox Rocks FR100 um, off screen here, but uh, just with any kind of overdrive pedal, um, you can get a great crunchy sound, great rhythm sound that's good for kind of chords and isn't too thick by rolling the volumes back and then roll it up and get get some more sustain for leads. So So it responds great to both um, overdrive and uh, clean sounds. It gives you way airier, uh, thinner, brighter, less compressed sounding cleans. Uh, whereas before I really only liked humbuckers for overdrive. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, use the volume and tone controls. The secret is having the pickup selector right in the middle. A lot of those real classic Jimmy Page lead guitar sounds uh, where you can really hear his pick on the strings like think since I've been loving you. That's like Les Paul in the middle selector for sure. And uh, you know, one of the great things about the old pickups, and th this, is, this is a 1985 uh, ES335, but it has the Shaw pickups which are also unpotted like the originals. And you'll hear they are totally totally microphonic in a good way because you can really hear the detail of the picking. So lower output, vintage style humbuckers, 50s wiring, middle uh, selector, and just mess with those volumes and tones and uh, get a whole variety of sounds that way. Thank you. 